Standing before my dad's casket seven years ago, I began to remember all of the horrific incidents that ultimately led to this moment. I was a 12-year-old Native American girl with an alcoholic father who committed suicide, a dropout and drug addict brother who later became well acquainted with the correction system. And I had even witnessed my house being raided by the police. But through it all, I had a loving and hardworking mother who believed in me unconditionally. My mom did anything and everything that she could to make ends meet. At one point, she had to work three jobs in order for me to part participate in athletics. And unfortunately, with the outrageous hours that she had to work, plus the cost of games, she was unable to attend the majority of them. The support of my mother seemed to fade as the, re as the reality of my family life became more painfully real to me. After my father's death, I hit rock bottom and had lost everything that had mattered. True friends, unity within my family, academic success, and my interest in athletics. Growing up, I was always told that I had a fire in my belly, one that could either change the world or destroy it. At this point in my life, I had chosen to tear the world to pieces with my anger-filled tendencies. My once glowing personality had been altered into a confused individual who fought off the damage that had occurred with misplaced pride and painful despair. Wendell Berry, a profound writer, once said, to work at this work alone is to fail. There is no help for it. Loneliness is its failure. Berry's statement concludes that one who has been damaged cannot heal alone. We need a sense of community and belonging in order to overcome the roller coaster word called life. Through my freshman year, I continued taunting my teachers, making barely passing grades, while staying an uninvolved and out of control student. Unfortunately, I was utilizing my overpowering personality in all of the wrong ways and covering up my devastation with my prideful tendencies. But for some reason, a teacher saw potential in me and recommended me to the newly adopted AVID program. Although I struggled with my father's death and family issues, I had always dreamed of being the first in my family to attend college. After going through a challenging process, I was finally admitted into AVID. This is the moment when I realized that I had the potential to do anything. My drive and ambition to success, to succeed, came within myself. But because someone saw potential in me, as a student, I began to believe that I could succeed. AVID created a welcoming and supportive environment that enabled me to become college ready. AVID curriculum required me to become involved within my school's activities, maintain a high GPA, apply for scholarships, and adopt strong study skills. Along with my driving personality, this has, has allowed me to succeed not only in the high school setting, but the college atmosphere as well. Healing from the damage that has occurred to me was not an easy process. Yes, AVID was the key to my success. And yes, my involvement in extracurriculars kept me busier than beyond belief. But I still hit several bumps in the road. I can recall numerous times when I wanted to give up because it was the easy way out. I blamed a lot of my failure on the obstacles that were placed in front of me. Through these times, there was one person, Karen Weberg, my teacher, coach, and friend. She pushed me to become the best person I could be. She always reiterated, no one can feel inferior without their own consent. <laughs> this quote replays in my head every time I am burdened with a struggle. Because of great teachers like Karen Weberg, I was able to turn my life around. I stand before you today as the same Rita Helmbrecht who lost her father in 2002. But now, I am much stronger and more determined. I have just finished up my sophomore year at Gonzaga University while maintaining a strong 3.7 GPA on the Bill Gates Millennium Scholarship. Because of AVID, teachers like Karen Weberg, my amazing mother, and the individual determination within me, 
I was able to overcome the obstacles that I had created at the beginning of high school and ultimately turn my pride and despair into a state of reconciliation. This summer, I have taken on a paid internship in Washington, D.C. with the United States Department of Agriculture and have continued my perseverance as a student at Gonzaga by being actively involved with student opportunities and organizations. Although it is never easy losing a loved one, especially a parent at a young age, I have realized that I have grown since that day I stood in front of my dad's casket. I am now a strong Native American woman who embraces challenges. However, with that being said, statistics show that the likeliness of this success occurring is slim. I have overcome the stereotype that America labels most Native Americans, but I still cry, I still miss him, and I still wonder why all of these daunting situations were placed in front of me. But I also realized that if anything had gone any differently, I would not have had the opportunity to break this cycle and give hope to other children who suffer as well. There are many of you here today who are teachers, principals, counselors, and avid supporters. Along with sharing my story, I challenge you to find one student whom you think has the potential to become college bound, but lacks a necessary resume, and embrace his weaknesses by showing him his strengths. I promise you that with a little hope and persistence, you too can change the life of another student. Thank you, and please remember what Wendell Berry says, a sense of community is key.